What's up out there? A roundup of news you might not have heard. Next on Global Pulse. Costello has details tonight on what went wrong near Huntington, Utah. In the U.S., the collapse of a coal mine and a bridge dominate the news. But here's what people are talking about in other places. According to Primero Noticias, Mexico has been rocked by a strange tale involving lots of U.S. dollars. This whole scandal begins, as you remember, with the seizure last March of $205 million in a residence. The house, as well as the money, belonged to the Mexican naturalized Chinese man, Jin Li Yi Gong, who since then has been a fugitive from Mexican justice. It is the largest cash money seizure registered in the world. Jin Li Yi Gong, shown here, said that one year ago he had met a man in his office that he identified as Labor Secretary Javier Lozano Alarcón, according to the Associated Press. I met Mr. Alarcón. Later he showed me two suitcases. I opened one and saw it was filled with money, just like that, bills. And then he says, cooperate? or I'll kill you. Copela o cuellos. They have to investigate everything. We could give credit to information coming from both sides. They have to investigate. The BBC and Russia Today covered Russia's groundbreaking expedition to the North Pole. More like an expedition from the golden age of exploration than a scientific research trip. An arduous journey through the ice a danger-filled mission for the subs, and finally, a triumphant ending, the planting of a flag. 1.2 million square kilometers, an area twice the size of France, lies between Russia and the North Pole. If it comes under Russian control, it won't be just a matter of prestige. Underneath the ice are probably extensive reserves of gas and oil. The waterways around the pole could also become lucrative shipping routes if the world's temperature continues to rise. The reaction from other countries with a stake in the Arctic was immediate. Look, uh, you know, this isn't the 15th century. You can't go around the world and just plant flags and say we're, we're claiming this territory. But the Russian side shot back. The point of the expedition was not to claim Russian rights on this or that place. The symbolic planting of the flag should not confuse anyone. It's common practice to leave your flag on, say, mountaintops or space objects. America, with its lands in Alaska, is seriously interested. Canada sees the Arctic as its backyard. Denmark has a claim with its control of Greenland. Norway is watching closely, but it's Russia that today is taking the boldest step, claiming this huge black chunk as well, saying this underwater ridge connects the seabed to the Russian mainland. We were the first to reach the bottom of the North Pole. I don't think anybody will be able to reach it in the near future. But if they do, what they'll find is our Russian flag. Thank you all for the great support. Finally, a big star has gone to jail in India. Bollywood actor Sanjay Dutt was today convicted for illegal possession of arms and sentenced to six years rigorous imprisonment. Dutt's counsel said that he would appeal against the six-year sentence handed down for illegal possession of a 9mm pistol and AK-56 rifles. He steadily began to build his career on the back of many hits, but his breakthrough role finally came in Kalnaik. The release of Kalnaik happened to coincide with Dutt's arrest in connection with the 1993 Mumbai bombings. Fans in Jammu held a sacred fire sacrifice or yagya for Dutt so that he would not have to face imprisonment. Till all avenues of appeal have been exhausted, fans and well-wishers across India will continue to pray for him. This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. 
programs which connect you to the world.